in the last stream, we were working on finally upgrading our extreme reactor over in here to be extraordinarily large. This is now so massive. And we also worked on setting up the induction matrix down on our lower level of the base here. And between streams, things have been chugging away, doing their thing. Uh, we've been producing power. Right now, we're actively not producing any power. We do have a 120 billion redstone flux backlog inside of the induction matrix. However, as I just mentioned, we're not currently making power. And the reason for that is that uh, we are completely out of actual uranium ingots. And although we did set up a uranium seed to grow extra uranium, what we didn't do in the last stream is we didn't put a crafting card into the exporter that feeds the reactor with that uranium. And so we're not actively turning the uranium essence into uranium ingots for the reactor to use. Thankfully, uh, that is a super easy fix. All we have to do is request that our system make one crafting upgrade. And of course, now that we have the dimensional upgrade in our wireless transmitter, we can access our refined storage system anywhere and in any dimension. And uh, we're probably also going to want to add a few speed upgrades to this as well, just so that the uranium can get into that reactor a little faster. And it's also probably about time that we add speed upgrades to the list of things that our refined storage system can make because we craft these so often and, and yet our refined storage system still does not know how to make them. Uh, so we'll just throw that in and then request three of those, start and start. And I think at that point, we should be pretty much good to go. Our reactor should kick back online. Um, I did notice over in here that our all quintupling system was temporarily offline. It does look like we're not getting quite enough sulfuric acid. And I think the main reason for that is that we're not quite getting enough sulfur. I did go ahead and craft two sulfur seeds. So over in here, we do have, um, I believe, two sulfur seeds, right? Yeah, one in each corner. It might not be a terrible idea for us maybe to make more of those, although this system was a little backed up uh, due to the fact that, of course, uh, if you watched the last stream, you'll know that previously over in here, uh, when the power went out, the wither exploded. He destroyed our stasis chamber and our fluid laser. Between streams, I have put all of this back together again, and so we are now making more ether gas, uh, but that does mean that temporarily between streams, all of our mystical agriculture seeds over here were not growing, and so I'm kind of hopeful that over time, we will kind of start to back up on sulfur again. I'll give it another look towards the end of today's stream. If we're still not backing up on sulfur, then maybe we'll add another sulfur seed or two to the system just to make sure that we do keep up and we can keep quintupling our ores. Speaking of quintupling our ores, if we head on back into here, one thing that I have done between streams is I have crafted this elite enriching factory, uh, which is basically an enriching chamber with the three installer upgrades, taking it up to elite. Over here in our XNet controller, we have, of course, the laser set to extract. Previously, everything was just going over to the chemical dissolution chamber. Uh, but now over here, I believe that we have um, a whitelist set up. So if we look for insert right here, you can see that I've whitelisted all of the ores that can't be quintupled. So things like redstone, coal, lapis, glowstone, nether quartz, etc. All of the ores are now being sent directly over to the elite smelting factory. And so in theory, all of the ores that are produced by the ore laser do now have somewhere to go. The only thing holding us back at this point is the speed at which everything moves. Of course, right now we're limited by sulfuric acid. Hopefully uh, we are gonna start backing up on that slowly but surely. Uh, but for now, this system is working, albeit somewhat slowly, uh, and it's not what we want to work on in today's stream. What I want to work on in today's stream is I want to finally start working on the space quest lines. So there are two in total. There is going up and other worlds. The going up quest line uh, begins with this battery over here. Right now we have not unlocked the quest. The reason for that is that uh, we first have to get dilithium dust. Dilithium dust we get by sifting overworld matter in a netherite mesh. Now we did put a netherite mesh into the overworld auto sieve a little while back. Uh, you'll notice that right now this is backing up on resources. The reason for that is that what we didn't do is we didn't add dilithium dust to the logistical sorter here. Uh, so all we need to do is grab at least one of our dilithium dust, click new filter, item stack, dilithium dust and black, save, and that should start moving all of that dilithium dust out. All we then have to do is make sure dilithium dust does have a place to go. 
So we'll do something like this, and that should mean the dilithium dust goes into the system and not over into that trash can all the way over there. So hopefully we should be good. Um, I don't think we're quite going to need that much dilithium dust. There is an awful lot of it uh, in this chest over here. If we do need more than 18 stacks of dilithium dust, we could be in trouble. But I think, especially if we're going to the moon at least, we're probably not going to need quite that much. Uh, but let's take a look uh, in the quest book here. The first quest uh, is, of course, to make the battery. The battery is made with three dilithium crystals, four iron plates, and then one iron ingot. So the dilithium crystals are also not too bad. They're made by smelting dilithium dust. And uh, as per usual, we do have our extremely fast Supremium Furnace over here, ready to make us a bunch of dilithium crystals nice and quickly. Looking ahead a little bit, if we look at the tier one rocket here, uh, this is made with compressed steel, which is steel in a compressor. The nose cone requires steel and then compressed steel and an antenna. And then the rocket fins require yet more steel, some iron plates and more steel plates. I'm kind of wondering if it's not gonna be a terrible idea for us to do, I guess two things here. One is gonna be to request a bunch of iron plates. Let's go and request maybe like 256 of those just so that they're made and ready if we need them. And then it also might not be a terrible idea to request uh, maybe like 512 steel. Again, just to kind of have it ready to go for all of these crafts today. Um, unfortunately, the steel plates cannot be made in our metal press. I do believe uh, the steel plates required here do have to be made in the compressor. We are getting a bit ahead of ourselves there because the compressor quest is one of the next quests we're going to get done here. Uh, either way, battery, do we have what it takes to make this? We totally do, beautiful. Following that, we have a quest for the titanium plate. Uh, this is made in the multi-servo press with one titanium ingot. We do have 520 titanium ingots ready to go. So let's just go ahead and drop one of those into the old plate making machine. I am gonna temporarily uh, kind of replace those iron plates. We probably don't need 32 of them though, so we can always go ahead and take the rest of those out and uh, come back if we do need them later. Uh, either way, titanium plates we should have. Again, they might be getting backed up kind of over in here. They are. Do we have the full set of speed and stack upgrades in here? We don't, we just have the one stack upgrade. And so actually let's put those three speed upgrades in like this. And then let's request three more speed upgrades for the uranium and the reactor. That should hopefully start to move things in faster. Um, it's not moving those iron plates in. And actually this might be chat where we have to take a bit of a detour because I think, yeah, the problem is not the speed and stack upgrade. The problem is that we don't have any space in our refined storage system. And that is because despite the fact that we have a ton of resources now, uh, we still only have 8,000 items worth of storage inside of our refined storage system. And so it's probably definitely worth uh, looking at upgrading to some higher tier storage disks, potentially even all the way up to some 64K storage disks. Okay, so it turns out we do have the extra storage mod installed, and this does add um, all the way up to a 16,384K storage disk. That might be a little bit overkill, simply due to the fact that it's also a bit of a pain to make, because for each uh, of these, we need a 16,384K storage pod, uh, which is made with three of the previous tier, which again, three of the previous tier, and 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 that's 1K storage parts. We would need a staggering amount of silicon redstone, uh, quartz, enriched iron, and glass if we wanted to make that many 1K storage parts. For now, I think what we can probably do is get a couple of 64K drives if we just go ahead and teach our system how to make the 64K storage part. And then from there, if we just teach it uh, all of the parts beneath it, it should already know, I think, how to make all of the processes and all of the uh, you know quartz enriched iron and whatnot that is required. And so I think just putting those in up here and then requesting the 64K storage parts. I might even take it one step further though and just teach our system how to make the actual disc itself because at that point, uh, we can just go ahead and request one 64K drive, start and start. And there we go, one 64K drive. If you're wondering why I have all of these oak slabs and grass blocks and flux dust in my inventory, uh, it's because we did have to free up some space here in order to allow the system to actually craft the drive. Uh, but it seems like it's actually pretty fast at crafting 64K drives. Uh, so much so that if I request another one here, start and start, how long does it take for the system to make that 64K drive. So it does take a little while, maybe two minutes total to make a 64K drive, which is really not too bad. Uh, the limiting factor for us though is glass. Like the, the thing that slows us down is just how long it takes our system 
to make glass. And so uh, going forward, what we might do is we might set up another material stoneworks factory, uh, like we've done for silicon here, uh, but instead of going cobble to gravel, gravel to sand, sand to silicon, we can of course do cobble to gravel, gravel to sand, sand to glass. Uh, and that would allow us to have like a backlog of glass ready to go so we don't have to make it uh, like on demand whenever we craft something. Um, for now though, we do have 136,000 items worth of storage in here, up from the, uh, the 8,000 that we had mere moments ago. And uh, so once again, we can go ahead and re-request the steel ingots we requested earlier. I did have to cancel those uh, just to make room in the system, but uh, that is done. And quest-wise, uh, we now have two quests. There is one to make the compressor, which I think is where we will start because that is definitely one uh, a machine that we're gonna have to use quite a bit of. Uh, for this, we need four steel, two titanium plates, one iron ingot, one battery, and then another redstone furnace. Uh, the redstone furnace is just missing some bricks. Hopefully we have eight of those. We do indeed, perfect. So we can make one redstone furnace, and then from there, a compressor. We might even have to go as far as to make a second compressor at some point today, depending on uh, how fast this first one is. For now, I'll put this down here. And then from there, what we should be able to do is just throw steel ingots into the compressor, and that should slowly but surely start to make uh, steel plates for us. Now, to the best of my knowledge, there's no way to increase the speed of this machine. And so we just kind of have to let it go at its current speed. And the unfortunate thing is that we probably need quite a bit of compressed steel, which is why I mentioned the fact that we might have to make multiple of those. Uh, but for now, the next quest after the compressed steel is the quest for the NASA workbench. Uh, this is used to create rockets for going into space. For this, we need four steel plates, one steel ingot, two levers, one crafting table, and one redstone torch. Nothing too crazy here. We just need the one more plate. Uh, while we wait for that, we can, of course, craft up a regular old crafting table, and we should also fairly easily be able to craft two levers. Beautiful. We'll take this guy, and then NASA workbench do we have what it takes we do not we're just missing one redstone torch which thankfully our system can make for us boom and i guess for now let's put this down oh i don't know this is quite the the machine and uh, maybe we'll put it down like here for now we might move that in the future uh, but this is the nasa workbench based on the actual real life machine that nasa used to make their rockets and uh, if we look in here the next quest on the quest line does want us to make a tier one rocket but of course to make it uh, we do need an iron engine a rocket fin and an iron tank so let's go ahead and quickly bookmark um all three of those oh we also need a nose cone as well so for these most of the ingredients are kind of the same. Uh, the iron tank does need uh, four tanks there. But for the most part, it's iron plates, it's steel. Uh, the iron engine is a bit more complex, requiring two batteries, an engine fan, and an engine casing. But again, none of that seems too bad. We do need four steel casing for this. And so uh, real quick, let's go ahead and request a few of those. Let me check real quick, actually. Again, if we're going to go with a tier one rocket, I just want to make sure we only need one engine. We do. Okay, cool. So we can just go ahead and request four. Three more steel casing here, and that should be everything for the engine there. Uh, while we wait for that, nose cone wise, we just need an Xnet antenna, which is also missing some iron bars. That seems very doable. And then from there, we should have basically everything apart from, of course, the steel plates, which are slowly but surely being made. So there is the nose cone. The rocket fin, we should have everything for. We do, beautiful. The iron tank, again, we should be able to make everything for there. Um, I don't know if our system knows how to make fluid tanks. I don't think it does, but then again, uh, they're not too hard to make. This one does require advanced tanks, but again, uh, we can make four of these. One, two, three, and four, nice and quickly. And then from there, making them to advanced tanks is also not going to be too bad. We do need a couple of the uh, the old infused alloy here. Again, I'll go for a stack just because they're fairly easy to make. And now that we do have this uh, advanced infusing factory, uh, it should get made nice and quickly. In fact, we do have uh, the elite installers here that we can make, and uh, we could use that to upgrade this even further and make it even faster. Boom. Nice. Either way, uh, we should now have everything it takes to make the four advanced tanks. One, two, three, and four. And from there, we can make at least one iron tank. Good stuff. And then as for the iron engine, we need one more battery. We did make one earlier, so hopefully we've still got that. Uh, we need an engine fan, which is just iron and steel. And then, of course, that engine casing. And I believe, chat, that is everything, or almost everything. We need, we're just missing one battery, apparently. Uh, almost everything for the iron engine. Nice. So at that point, we have finally unlocked the tier one rocket quest. And for that, we need four rocket fins, two iron tanks, one nose cone, and one engine. So my first question is, can I leave stuff in the NASA workbench? I can, 
Uh, the particle effects there are a little concerning, but I think we should be fine. So these go here, those go there. Uh, we then need a bunch of steel plates. I believe those go in the middle like this. Do we need six of them in total? We do. And now we just need three more rocket fins and one more iron tank. And boom, there is our second iron tank. And I believe, chat, there's our rocket. Nice. Okay, so from there, we can go ahead and start uh, claiming all of these, I guess. Beautiful. So at this point, we have to make a launch pad to actually place our rocket onto, and then we have to get the fuel refinery uh, to begin, of course, producing fuel that we can then load into the tier one rocket. Um, I don't know if there's a quest for it, but I think we also might need a fuel loader. Oh, I guess not. There's only the oxygen loader here. Um, in older versions of Galacticraft, you did used to have to load the fuel into the rocket. However, that might have changed in, uh, in newer versions here. So we are, of course, going to have to launch our rocket from the surface, and I feel like we might as well do it over here. Do we have what it takes to make nine rocket launch pad? We do. Once we have that, we are greeted again by our good friends, the Phantoms. So let's quickly see if we can't, uh, can't sleep here. Once we get rid of the Phantoms, we can then put these down. Uh, so it's basically just a three by three platform. You'll know it's right when that middle one pops up a bit like that. Uh, we can then place the rocket on the launch pad like so, ready to, uh, to take off later on today. Uh, then we need, of course, that fuel refinery, which does require a block of refined glowstone. Okay, we'll have to come back to that one in just a second here. Let's make the two buckets and the battery. So for refined glowstone, we need an osmium compressor, which I actually think we already have, right? Uh, wasn't there also a quest, though, in here to make an osmium compressor? Oh, no, this is for the combiner to make blank ore. Okay, that should be fine. Down here, we do have an osmium compressor, I believe, right here. We totally do. Uh, so we can just throw the nine required glowstone in like that. And uh, do we have some uh, speed and efficiency upgrades? We totally do. Beautiful. Let's get all eight of those in to make that hopefully nice and quick. And there we go. That machine still makes a horrible sound, but we do have nine refined glowstone ingots. So boom, that is done. And from there, we can go boom and make the fuel refinery. Nice. So for the refinery quest, it says placing a bucket of lava in the orange slot in the refinery will create rocket fuel. Rockets can be filled by shift right clicking on a rocket and placing the bucket inside. Oh, I see. Okay. So again, this is ever so slightly different to uh, the old Galacticraft, but over here, we can just put the bucket in there. I see. Okay. And also there's no like oil refining or anything like that. It's just lava. That should be fine. We do have lava, of course, being produced uh, down on this lower level here. But then again, we do also have lava connected up to our Xnet system. And so I think what we should be able to do, uh, if we just put this here, and of course make sure that that is set to receive power, we should then also be able to insert it on the lava channel, which I believe is this channel here. So if we say insert again, that should start pumping lava in, if that's allowed. Although maybe you do have to do it in bucket form. If you do that, slightly awkward, but not terrible. Let me test something here. If I take a tank and I put that there, if we set that tank to insert, does that receive lava? It does, yes. Yeah. So for whatever reason, unfortunately, it looks like you can't pump lava into the fuel refinery, but I assume what we can do is we can make a regular old iron bucket and then use that to move the lava into the refinery like that, and then that produces the rocket fuel. I assume you get a bucket uh, worth of rocket fuel for every uh, bucket of lava that you put in, you totally do. And then we could of course take that out and then carry that up to the spaceship over here. And again, if we shift right click on the rocket, we can place that in and boom. So each bucket fills up a surprisingly large amount of the rocket fuel. So it looks like one bucket of rocket fuel is 100% of the rocket's capacity. I'll take it. I was expecting to have to put like 10 or 20 buckets worth of uh, worth of fuel into this, but either way, uh, apparently one bucket of fuel, aka one bucket of lava, is all that you need, which is very nice indeed. Uh, we'll claim our rewards there. So now, we just have to make sure that when we get to space, we don't immediately die, because of course there is no oxygen in space. Uh, that is why we need the spacesuit and the oxygen loader. So, back over here, let's have a look. For the spacesuit, We've got the space suit, the space pants, and the space boots. Uh, all of these have pretty similar recipes. They do require quite a bit of wool. Thankfully, we do have uh, some string from our mob farm, so we can go and craft up quite a bit of wool uh, in preparation here. And once we have that, the space boots and the space pants 
are both super easy for us to make. The space suit itself is slightly more difficult, uh, requiring some oxygen gear, which requires an iron stick, but thankfully nothing too crazy there. And boom, there's our oxygen gear. We also then need two oxygen tanks, which are made with red wool, iron plates, and iron. So uh, red wool also should not be a problem because we, of course, do have plenty of beets being made over here. So we'll take those and then uh, very quickly fill up our crafting grid by moving it to our hotbar. And at that point, we should then be able to make some of the red wool here uh, required to make the oxygen tanks. One and two. And boom. Nice. Okay, so we can put these on. Beautiful. And then I think the final piece of the puzzle is the oxygen mask, this guy right here, which again, extremely easy for us to make. We need one glass and one iron helmet. An iron helmet we have and a glass we can request our system makes for us. And boom, an oxygen mask as well. Nice. So once that quest is complete, we then have the oxygen loader. Place leaves in the, uh, in the green slot and your spacesuit chest plate in the orange slot to fill with oxygen. Okay, so again, that's slightly different to how it used to work with Galacticraft, but shouldn't be uh, too difficult for us to do. We do need one more oxygen tank. Thankfully, we made enough red uh, wool there. And then uh, that should be basically everything, I think, for the uh, oxygen loader. It is beautiful. So uh, once again, I assume this is going to require power. Um, I forgot that we had the... Um, the speed augment on our leggings, and now we're moving much slower again. It's a little disorienting, honestly, but uh, either way, uh, despite it being somewhat janky, I'm going to do like this to make sure we can get the oxygen loader onto an exit connector easily. And then, of course, over here, we can once again set that to insert on power, quickly grab some leaves from our system, and then over in here, we should be able to put the space suit into the orange slot and the leaves into the green slot, and that should hopefully nice and quickly fill up our spacesuit with enough oxygen for us to uh, walk around a little bit on the moon. So we're about halfway full here on the oxygen. I think that's probably going to be fine. I don't know if we necessarily need a full tank of oxygen. I also don't necessarily know how easy it's going to be for us to get back. What I am going to do is I'm going to take a bucket of fuel with us. And I'm also going to take a spare landing pad as well. Again, I've not played with this version of Galacticraft. Usually you get your landing pad back. So you can then leave again. But just in case we don't, I'm going to take some rocket fuel with us so we can hopefully get back on this uh, secondary landing pad. Um, but I think, Chad, that we are basically good to go here. Again, we can't fly now because we've taken off our uh, Supremium armor. One thing we can do if we really want to is we can put our Supremium armor into these cosmetic armor slots. That makes it look like we're wearing Supremium armor, even though we're not. Um, and then we can pop on into here. And I believe all we have to do is hit space. I'll press F5 as well so we get a better view of this. And we get this lovely countdown in the center of the screen. And I think this is it, chat. I think we're headed to the moon. Once we get above the atmosphere, we get this option here. Right now, uh, we can go to the overworld, to Mars or to Mercury. I think if I click overworld, I'm hoping it gives me the option for the moon. It does, yeah. So we can go back to the overworld, uh, we can go to the moon, or we can orbit either of them or make a space station on either of them. Uh, let's go to the moon. Here we go. So we left shift to dismount, warning zero speed. So normally you have to press space to slow this down. Yeah, so you'll see at the top, the number goes up if I let go of space, and then if I hold space, the number goes down a bit. So I don't know if it says that to you, but uh, you want to make sure you're holding space. At least when you get close to the ground, you can see on the left, there's a little bar that shows you how close to the surface you are. Uh, if you hold space, you do kind of slow down your descent, which means you hopefully are not going to crash land into the moon. I think if you do crash hard enough, you might die. Uh, so I am fully holding space now to make sure that we do not crash. Beautiful. Okay, and then we can press left shift to dismount. And here we are, we're in space, we're on the moon. That's what it feels like. That's what Minecraft Earth looks like. And of course it is the moon, so we do have slightly lower gravity than before. And you'll see that slowly but surely our oxygen is depleting, but not incredibly fast. And if we check the quest book here, now that we're on other worlds, 
Uh, the first quest is uh, the moon, but the second quest here is to get moon dash ore found underground on the moon. And uh, if we're going to make a tier two rocket, we do need quite a bit of it because the tier two rocket requires compressed dash, which is made from dash ingots, which is made uh, from the dash that we get here. So at this point, we have to see if we can't find some of that dash. We do have uh, Ultimine, of course, and so we can break large areas at a time. And the new Supreme Pickaxe that we have uh, does have an unlimited amount of durability. And so we can actually excavate out a very large area of, uh, of this Moonstone very quickly. And of course, we can access our refined storage system in any dimension. Uh, and so we can get some torches here to place down as we go. Of course, torches uh, go out instantly on the moon because there is no uh, oxygen there. That is fine. Instead, let's go ahead and grab some glowstone and see if we can't make a few glowstone blocks, maybe. Yeah, that works much better. So we do still run into the same problem that when we go down low enough, uh, we get mining fatigue because we don't actually have the, the vitamins yet. That could be a problem if Dash Ore does spawn lower than like Y level 40. I'm actually not entirely certain on the Y level that it spawns at. Um, I also don't know. Well, first of all, I do know that our inventory is filling up here. Uh, how expensive are the vitamins in the shop here? Uh, they require 50 C books, which we might actually have. Uh, but we also have to complete another quest to unlock vitamins. And I don't quite know which quest that is. Okay, so I've done a bit, quite a bit of exploration. I've looked around on... The, uh, the surface here, I've not found anything. I also went quite far down. It's kind of hard to show you because I can't fly, but we went quite far down and, and quite far out uh, underground as well. And I didn't find any dash ore, which is a little unfortunate. Um, however, one suggestion that has been made in the Twitch chat, and let me just quickly get rid of some of this moonstone that we don't need here. But uh, one suggestion that has been made, uh, and it looks like we didn't get our launch pad back. So maybe it was a good thing that I brought these with me. Uh, but one suggestion that has been made is that we could get the digital miner from Mechanism, uh, which would allow us to kind of mine uh, a bunch of the ores in this dimension without having to go down uh, to that specific ores level. Uh, how much fuel is in this? Zero. Okay, so it's also a good idea that we brought the fuel as well. Otherwise, it looks like you can't get back. I don't know if we're going to land directly on the launch pad here or if we're going to land in the water. I think it might put us back directly where we jumped from as well. Oh no, we are going to land in the water. Beautiful. Okay, so well, once again, we'll uh, grab that rocket for future launches. We can actually go ahead and put that down just over here. So as far as the digital miner goes, to make it, we do need two atomic alloys, one basic control circuit. Uh, our system doesn't know how to make the atomic alloys. And in fact, let's go ahead and just request those before we continue on here. Boom and boom. We then need two more logistical sorters, which we might have. We don't. Uh, we can make them though. Uh, our system does know how to make bronze and we do have some constantin. It doesn't know how to make logistical sorters, but again, we can make those nice and easily. Uh, let's go ahead and request the bronze. We also need a robot, uh, which is made with another atomic alloy, two reinforced obsidian, two energy tablets, one personal chest and a steel ingot. And then finally, we need a steel casing and two teleportation cores, the teleportation cores made with yet more of those atomic alloys. Uh, we do have some of those atomic alloys because we just requested them, but let's go and request maybe like another 10 real quick. And uh, while we wait for that, we can look at putting together two logistical sorters. We just need some more bronze start. And then the robot really shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, most of this seems pretty straightforward. We need another chest start and... Boom, that gets the personal chest. And then from there, uh, we're just missing the energy tablets, I think, for the robot. And boom, there is the robot. And then what are we missing? We're missing one more logistical transporter, as well as those two teleportation cores. And by two, I mean the one extra teleportation core. And then of course, our system does know how to make the steel casing start. And boom, we have a digital miner. Nice. So the way this works, and uh, temporarily, I'm gonna take off this spacesuit and I am going to, uh, uh, we need to, Get rid of this moon dash. I want to put my Supreme Mama back on, not only so that we get water breathing, but also so that we can fly and move faster. We are now finally out of storage drawer space. We've kind of used up all of our drawers. Uh, I do believe though that over here, there are kind of two slots that are not yet using drawers. And we do have some glass drawers ready to fill in this space. There we go. We can stick our moonstone in there. And of course we can grab our draw key to uh, lock that up as well. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, if I put this down, 
here temporarily. Uh, the way that the digital miner works is in here, you can configure how the, or like what the miner mines. So you can see on the left, we have the radius. We also have the min and the max. So the min is the lowest Y level that it will scan. And the max is the highest Y level that it will scan. So if we think that the dash or only spawns, say, under Y level 40, we could set the max to 40, the min to zero, and then the radius to, I don't know if there's a maximum here. It might be like 99. 32 is the max, um, but that's going to be the area. So it'll search 32 out in each direction. And between the Y levels of zero and 40 beneath it, we could then go a new filter. We could do tag. And I think we can do forge colon ores and then save. And that should dig any ore that is on the moon. Much like with all the other machines from Mechanism, we can use speed and energy upgrades to make it faster, and it will eject its wares out of uh, the back here, so we want to put a chest there. And then I guess we're also going to want to get a, a flux point, so we can actually transfer power to this when we put it down up on the moon. All right, so we're back once again. Our lunar lander did land in the same place again here. That's also fine. Let's get that rocket out uh, of... This lander of here, and I'll drop that down over there, just ready for when we need to leave again. We'll fill that with fuel. Uh, so now, if we put this down here, and if we give it power, which I believe we can do here, we can make sure it's set to the gaming on caffeine network. Beautiful. Uh, we can then give this the speed and energy upgrades. Again, I assume we can just shift click these in. You totally can. Beautiful. Good stuff. And then from there, let's go config. Let's go radius 32, min zero, max 40, new filter. Right now we've got forge corn ores slash dash. I don't know if this works, just in case it doesn't, I'm also gonna go tag uh, forge colon ores and save. Uh, we shouldn't get really anything other than dash and cheese ore, I don't think. Uh, but now once we have both those in, we can click start and that should hopefully start scanning those Y levels and ideally producing ores that we can then put into a chest right about here. Okay, so this is working. Uh, basically what we've done here, uh, if I click reset real quick and go to config, uh, what we've done uh, instead, because trying to filter for dash didn't find anything, uh, but instead in the bottom, there's an inverse mode button. If you click that right now, it says I on, uh, by default, I is off. If you turn that on, that basically switches this uh, page here from a whitelist to a blacklist. So basically what we've done now is we've told our miner to mine everything that is not Moonstone. So we just went, uh, I'll delete this. We went new filter, item stack, Moonstone, save. And so now we've told it to mine everything under Y level 25 uh, within a 32 block radius that is not Moonstone. So we then backed out, click start. You'll see now it says there are over a thousand things that can mine and you'll see it's mining moon dash, it's mining moon cheese, it's mining moon iron, and it's also mining some glowstone as well. And it's going quite quickly through all of those. One thing we can do here uh, is we can make an anchor upgrade from a mechanism. Uh, we're just missing some diamond dust for that, which our system does know how to make. Uh, the anchor upgrade basically allows us to keep the digital miner loaded. So if we put this in over here, like we would with any other upgrade, the Digital mine open will now continue to run even when we're not here. And so what we can do is we can go back and it will just keep providing stuff for us. Uh, we could even, if we wanted to take it a step further, uh, get an ender chest and put that down in place of the regular chest that we have uh, so that we can continue to get all of our wares here back in the overworld. As per usual, let's uh, lock our ender chest with a diamond. And then I'm pretty sure blue, white, blue uh, is our kind of main frequency that pulls into the refined storage system. So if we just do blue, white, blue like that, um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is where all of the main stuff goes. That was a little bit of lithium dust there. Uh, so all we need to do is put this down like so. And then chat is reminding me that we need to turn auto eject on, which is right here. Boom. And that's going to start ejecting that into the ender chest. And that's going to send everything back to the overworld. Beautiful. Okay. So now we can head back. We should have, I think, more than enough dash. Uh, to get everything we need. Uh, in here, we are fueled up and I believe ready to go. Let me just quickly take that bucket out so we don't lose it. And we'll go ahead and launch back. And I think that's basically everything that we have to do on the moon. There's not a whole lot there. I think mostly the idea behind the moon is getting the dash required to uh, move on to Mars, to the tier two rocket, and then to Mars, and then maybe even the tier three rocket and uh, Mercury. And there we go, we are back at home. Let's go ahead and take that rocket. I don't know if we need this for the next tier of rocket, but we might. Uh, let's also, once again, replace all of our armor there. 
So now that we have the dash, which should be in our system, we've got 145 of it. Uh, people are pointing out in the Twitch chat that you can run the dash or here through the or quintupling system. So you can run it through the chemical dissolution chamber, the chemical injection chamber, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think I probably will go ahead and just drop this in right about there. Again, we're still running into the problem that is sulfuric acid. And again, it seems like the trouble is that we're not producing the sulfur fast enough. We do, of course, have this other sulfur that we got earlier in the series that does work in here and that will produce uh, sulfur dioxide. We can kind of give it a kickstart. But ideally, I think uh, we are going to want to make some more sulfur seeds. It looks like the two that we have are just not producing uh, the sulfur anywhere near fast enough. Uh, so I will quickly grab this sulfur and I will take that prudentium essence that I just requested. And then let's go, let's make two more actually, and we'll see if that does the trick. So for now, I think we'll replace these two coal seeds. I do want to have at least one coal seed down. Like we could put two down actually over here. My reasoning for moving the coal there was going to be that we have the pedestal in the middle, but for some reason, it seems that the fertilizer upgrade has been removed from the pedestal. I'm not quite sure why. That's actually quite awkward because we did fully upgrade that. Um, it's not a huge deal. We can make another one. And uh, we do, of course, want to make one with a much larger area uh, for the future. For now, though, that's probably one of the reasons why we're not getting enough sulfur and maybe not enough uranium for our system. Uh, we'll work on that, I think, in the next stream. For now, let us uh, go and check. How are we doing on dash? We do have 86 dash ingots already, uh, thanks to that all quintupling system. Again, the thanks uh, to the fact that we put some sulfur uh, in manually, we have sped up uh, this tremendously. And of course, uh, given that this system does quintuple ores, um, it doesn't take many dash uh, ore in order to get, you know, 100 dash ingots. It's only 20 dash ore uh, for 100 dash ingots. But now that we have it, uh, let's have a look at making this tier two rocket here. It's better than a tier one rocket. Um, it looks like for the most part, the recipe is almost exactly the same. The only things being different here are the need for six compressed dash. And again, we will go and start just compressing up a bunch of dash over in here. And then we also need two golden tanks instead of basic tanks. Uh, and these are made in the exact same way as the older tanks, uh, but with just elite fluid tanks as opposed to advanced fluid tanks. And not too long later, boom and boom. None of that was, was really too difficult. Uh, we did have to make, like I mentioned, the higher tier fluid tanks there, but that's not too bad. And uh, the golden engine does require one dash plate, which you have to make in the multi-servo press. It's not to be confused with the compressed dash, which also uh, kind of look like dash plates. But either way, uh, we do now have a tier two rocket, which I'm assuming once again is going to require some form of fuel. Uh, I'm not quite sure how much fuel we are going to need. Uh, while we wait, we can also put our chest plate back in here to kind of get that filling again, even though um, it does seem like the oxygen in here does last a tremendous amount of time. In fact, I think if you have it full, you can get over an hour on the, on the moon. And so the 20,000 we currently have is almost certainly going to be more than enough for, uh, for our expedition. But uh, for now, we'll take the tier two rocket. We'll place that down over on here. We'll then shift right click to put the fuel in. Again, I'm not too sure if, oh, do we need a different kind of fuel for a tier two rocket? So it turns out we need a barrel here, and then we need to fill that barrel with fuel in the fuel refinery. So almost the same system, just ever so slightly different. We need uh, two buckets and then we need uh, one yellow dye. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any dandelion yellow lying around. Thankfully, we do have this platform over here that does have dandelions on it. And so boom and boom, that gets us our barrel that we can fill with fuel. And so once again, down here, we can drop that into the old fuel refinery. Um, it looks like in GAEI, this does take, uh, like hold more fuel. It says three buckets there. So uh, presumably, I don't know if I can put this back in. I don't think I can. I'm kind of stuck with this uh, bucket of fuel now. But uh, if we go ahead and make another iron bucket, uh, what we should be able to do is move over three buckets of lava. And there we go. We have a barrel of fuel, which presumably just like before, we can then take up to the surface and then shift right click into the rocket, we can indeed. And again, I'm gonna assume once again, that does completely fill the rocket up. And at that point, we can head over to Mars. Not only are we gonna get some Mars stone and some Mars sand, but we can also start looking for Mars silicon ore found underground on Mars. Now it's at this point that I've probably been a bit silly here because I imagine that what we probably should have done is we should have set up a way to get more easily to the moon and back, or at the very least, we should have brought the digital miner back from the moon, because now we have the option of either making a, an entirely new digital miner or going to get the digital miner that we just put down on the moon. Now, my first question is, 
if I break this rocket, does it retain its fuel? Yes. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put down the old rocket, use this fuel that we have, and I'm going to go and get the, uh, the digital miner back. All right, so not too long later, uh, we've just got a second barrel of oil because of course, much like before, we are going to need another barrel to get us back. Um, we've got the digital miner. Uh, we are, I think, pretty much good to go here. We can just jump into the old tier two rocket, hit space, that's gonna launch, and we are headed to Mars. So once again, we can now do Mars and Mars, and presumably we're gonna be in the same situation. If we wanna be, if we wanna go a bit faster, you can kind of let it fall. You'll notice the speed at the top does get faster and faster, but you've got to make sure that eventually you do hit space. You've got to hit space early enough so you don't crash land into the uh, the surface of Mars. But it looks like we are good to go here. This is a very vibrant color on the surface of Mars here. Beautiful. So we'll dismount. Uh, we didn't bring a launch pad with us, but that's fine uh, because we can access our system and can therefore just craft a new launch pad remotely and then we can do one two three four five six seven eight nine and drop that back down make sure that we once again fill that up with fuel and while we wait for that to fuel up we can once again throw down our digital miner we can attach it to power using the flux point like so it does retain its inventory which is interesting wasn't expecting that to be honest but uh, either way uh, let's go ahead and reset the config we'll get rid of this we'll then basically do the exact same thing we'll grab some mars sand and some mars stone I'm going to once again assume that the silicon is quite low down, so if we go config, new filter, item stack, and then Mars stone, save, we make sure that inverse mode is on, and we're again gonna do between Y levels zero and 25. Let's click start, and look at that, boom. Silicon, right away, uh, we're also getting some Mars iron ore. Uh, let's once again take a look at the quest book here. So, uh, we actually didn't get the reward, there it is, beautiful. And if we're gonna make the tier three rocket, Again, it's fairly similar. The nose cone and the rocket fin are the same. The compressed silicon is made by putting silicon ingots into the compressor, and silicon ingots are made by smelting Mars silicon. Um, but once again, it does look like you can put the Mars silicon through the ore quintupling system, but I've been told that we don't actually get the right silicon out of the other end. Yeah, no, so it gives us this silicon dust, which we would then smelt into regular silicon. So um, unfortunately, that's not gonna work, although, it looks like you don't even have to come to Mars to get the Mars silicon ore, because it looks like you can take the silicon dust that you get from sifting overworld matter and then just combine that in a mechanism combiner with cobblestone to make Mars silicon ore. I have a feeling that might be a bug, potentially. But either way, we've got some uh, ice shards here. We've also got some uh, silicon ore. Uh, we can, of course, do one of these, and uh, if that's set to auto-eject, which it is, that's gonna eject all that and put it into the system for us. Um, but yeah, basically now, chat, if we're gonna finish these quest lines here, all we need to do is craft up the tier three rocket that does require a diamond tank, which requires ultimate fluid tanks, um, as well as two more oxygen tanks, a diamond engine, which is again, the exact same recipe, but this time with silicon ingots, as opposed to with dash ingots, like before. And so yeah, this really shouldn't be too difficult for us to do, I don't think. We can just uh, pick this guy up. I think we probably already have enough silicon, and because I don't want to come back to Mars, I am going to pick this up. Uh, we'll also grab the ender chest and grab the digital miner. And let's head back, shall we? One and two, and there we go. Again, very similar recipe. Uh, the only thing really different here is the diamond tanks require ultimate fluid tanks as opposed to uh, elite fluid tanks. We needed compressed silicon, and then the diamond engine uh, now requires silicon ingots, and everything else is basically the same craft again. Uh, so now, uh, again, I don't know if there's a new tier of fuel. I guess we'll find out momentarily. Let's put the tier three rocket down right about there. Uh, I will go and fill up this barrel again. I don't think there's another method of fueling up, but there could be. Yeah, so once again, it's just the, uh, the barrel in this time. Whether or not we need more than one barrel, I'm actually not too sure. There's also a quest up here for space station. Various planets allow for the creation of space stations which orbit the planet. That seems very easy for us to make. Whether or not we set up a space station, I'm not yet sure, but uh, we just need two blocks of quartz, one and two, and that should basically complete the quest line uh, once we get the uh, blocks of mercury here. 
Uh, let's have a look in here. Nope, turns out one barrel is still more than enough to uh, fuel the tier three rocket. Of course, as per usual, let's make sure we get a, a second barrel so that we can return from Mercury once we're good. Uh, we do have our digital miner, although I don't think we're going to need it because unlike the moon and Mars, there's no specific resource here that we need. We just need Mercury stone and Mercury cobblestone. So presumably all we have to do is just go and pick the stone up like we did with the moon sand and moonstone and mercury sand and mercury stone and launch this time we'll go mercury and boom again we'll try and go down quite quickly i don't know if the i assume the distance is the same on every planet so i assume if we hit space right about here we shouldn't crash yeah we're good we could probably actually wait like a little longer i'm, I'm kind of hitting uh, holding space when the uh Icon on the left gets about halfway down, but I imagine you could probably take it to about a third, maybe a quarter of the way down before you hit uh, hit space. But here we are, Mercury, of all places. Once again, we can uh, use our refined storage system here to craft up yet another rocket launch pad. Once again, drop that down like so. And if we grab the rocket, place it down on the launch pad and get that fuel in, that is ready to go when we need to leave. We can then grab some Mercury stone uh, there's also some mercury cobblestone and chat would you look at that the chapter is complete we'll claim all of the c books there and i think that's basically it as far as space goes um do we get anything particularly useful from this i don't think so i don't think there are necessarily any resources uh, that we get here that we need for progression but it's a fun little side quest to do nonetheless and we have now completed the space quest lines and so at this point chat i think really um what we're going to work on going forward is trying to get to the end game there's this quest line here the end game uh, for extended crafting and i think we'll start looking at this in the next stream we start by making this black iron ingot here and then getting all of the different tiers of uh, crafting table from the extended crafting mod and then uh, once we have those we can start looking at making quantum compressors these are a little expensive uh, with the black iron frame here requiring a supreme machine frame uh, inside of an ultimate crafting table uh, our system doesn't quite yet know how to make supreme machine frames but we do have ether gas automated now and so in theory we could teach our system how to make that uh, that shouldn't be too difficult the quantum compressors are what we use to produce the singularities these right here so the ultimate singularity is the highest tier of singularity it's made from all of the other singularities uh, crafted together in an ultimate crafting table all of the other singularities are made in a quantum compressor and you need uh, i think it's 5000 of each and every single one of these so we would need 5000 of every single one of these resources in a quantum compressor to make that resource's singularity along with an ultimate catalyst for each one the ultimate catalyst made with emeralds and luminescence luminescence glowstone redstone and gunpowder and then there's our black iron we mentioned earlier so this should be fairly doable now that we have our orc quintupling now that we have a lot of mystical agriculture uh, we should hopefully be able to get to 5,000 of each resource fairly quickly uh, that th the trouble comes though in in that that only gets us one ultimate singularity if we look further forward into uh, chapter challenge 14 i'm fairly certain we might need more than one ultimate singularity yeah so basically a lot of these uh, creative quests at the end here so for example you can get a creative refined storage controller which basically doesn't require power uh, for this you have to get uh, eight creative essence creative essence is made in the induction smelter with an ultimate singularity and an ultimate ingot so if we need eight of those we would need eight ultimate singularities and eight ultimate ingots the ultimate ingots are also pretty tricky they're made with all of the ingots crafted together some of these we don't yet have the resources to make. Uh, things like the fiery ingot here uh, require that we have uh, fiery tears from the Twilight Forest. The idea with these is that we'll probably try and get um, enough fiery ingots to make the fiery seeds right here. And then we can use those, of course, to make as much fiery essence as we want and therefore as many fiery ingots as we want. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to find a way to get multiple of all of these ingots so we can make a lot of ultimate ingots and multiple lots of 5,000 of all of these resources so that we can get a bunch of creative essence. And once we have that creative essence, we can move on to really the end of the pack chat and start looking at making uh, some of these creative items here, including the creative storage disk, uh, creative ability, which I believe is a creative upgrade for Tinker's tools. Not necessarily something we need, but something we could look at making if we wanted to. Um, and yeah, there's quite a few here, actually. But for now, chat, I think that's probably where we're going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream. Thank you